say, look, uh, I was naked and I hid myself because of the sin and the shame, but we desire to have that encounter with God. Encounter means to collide with the unexpected. An encounter with God is a collision that bridges a gap between the natural and the supernatural world. The thing about encounters, they will bring change. They'll, be, they'll bring change. And I'm, I'm not talking about somebody else. Oftentimes, we want somebody else to change. And the change could not take place in us. Sometimes the situation and circumstances won't change. But if you change, you will see the circumstances and, and the situation in a different manner. And so encounter will bring about change. There's no way that you can stand in the presence of God and have encounter with him and not be changed. The, the impact that it had on Isaiah when he saw the Lord high and lifted up. I want you to know that encounters, you know, we're not just coming into the presence of God just to remain the same, but we're coming that he might change us, and, and here it is, and that we might be transformed from one degree of glory to another. That transformation is always taking place, that we're always, we're always being transformed, you know, by the, by the power of God. Encounters will bring vision. Amen. And so vision just don't drop on us. Come on. But vision will come as we spend uh, present, uh, spend time in the presence of God. It comes to bring direction. And many of us find ourselves at an impact. You don't know which way to turn, which way to go. I challenge you to begin to spend quality time in the presence of God. And he will give you direction. He will give you guidance. Come on, somebody. The, the encounter with God will bring deliverance. So things that you've been bound by, things that you've been you know, entangled with, if you have constant uh, 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 encounter with God, he's able to bring deliverance in your life. You won't need to go to somebody. You won't, you won't be paying somebody and going to this conference, that conference. I want you to know that the breath of God will bring transformation. That the glory, the weightiness, the heaviness of God will be so profound in our lives that it can bring deliverance to us. It will bring transformation. You know, Isaiah said, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean myths. I'm undone. Encounter with God will show us our ugliness. Encounter with God will show us our fault. Encounter with God will show us you know, where, we, where, where we lack because when he encounters us, he encounters us with all Oh, <laughs> 
this you I get my pick on married people, married people today. Sometimes you go back when you find your love waning and growing cold. You go to that place when you first met each other. Uh-huh. Uh, go back to that restaurant where 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 where, where they were sparkling your eyes. Come on. When the spark was left, you go back to that place where it was sparkled in your eyes. Sparkles, come on. And you said stuff like, honey, I crossed the desert sand on my knees and hands to you. I climbed the highest mountain, I crawled across the earth, the higher the widest ocean, just for you, baby. You light my fire, you know all that stuff you talk pre marriage. Somehow it's not there anymore. You gotta, you gotta revisit the place of memories. Come on, when his voice sounded sweet and come on, when, when you, you know what I'm talking about. And so, and so, it's, it's, we like to go back to the place of fond memories. Come on, and we, and we just wanna reminisce, go down memory lane for a few moments. It's a place where memorials are built in heaven but memories can hear. And so we talk about this, we talk about, you know, the psalmist said, he that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High. God said, build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. It's God's desire to have fellowship with us. I want you to know that you have to have the right spot. It said, he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That's the right spot. The secret place is the right spot. Uh, I was talking to another guy that told me that they heard me say something. He said, I, I was saying something about the sweet spot. And he said, what was the sweet spot? Of course, he would know because he had a ball player. But ball players know the sweet spot. You see, and his, his dog was trying to teach his dog. He was giving some lessons. She was shooting, you know, bank, bank shot, and she kept missing. I said, show where the sweet spot is. Because the sweet spot is the spot that you hit. It goes every, in time, every time. Every time. Uh, every time. See, the same thing is saying about that. That's the human. And so, it's, it's, it's the sweet spot. And it's just, it's one spot. If you hit it, it'll go in every time. You got to have the sweet spot. So when you go in it, you're going to hit God. And God gonna hit you. It's gonna be a collision. You're not going to miss it. Hallelujah. And so this, there, there is, there is significance of the right place. See, sometimes we think any old place will do. No, 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 no. You got to understand the significance of the right place. And so my sister can justify that she was in the right place today. Amen. You got to hear me today. I tell you, there, there, there's a significance of being at the right place. And sometimes you can be any place, but you're not going to get what God wants to give you if you're not the right place. You might get something, but you're not going to get what He really wants you to have. And so, and so does the right place matter? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It's in the secret place. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high. Jeremiah 18.2, God tells Jeremiah to do what? Go down to the Father's house. And what God would have revealed to him would have been revealed no other place except the Father's house. Now you could have gone someplace else. He could have gone someplace else, but he would not have received what God wanted him to receive. The instruction was to go to the Father's house. So look at Jeremiah 18.2 for me. Who has it? Look at this. And there, I will cause thee to hear my word. And there, I will cause you to hear my word. Come on. Jeremiah had to follow the instructions. The Potter's house was the right place to be. It's Psalm 133. Psalm 133, it says, you know, it talks about, and there the Lord commanded the blessing. And there the Lord commanded the blessing. You see, sometimes God is not commanding the blessing everywhere, but there is a specific place and a specific time. And I we talked about that earlier today, this morning, that you have to understand that the moments, even seconds, that God is doing something significant and you've got to be in tune to it to capture that second because it 
to see David was away from the presence of God. He said, I want to see your power and your glory as I have seen it in the sanctuary. And so some folks think coming to church is not important. I can get it at home. No, no, no. You got to have to pray for God to command the blessing. You pray for God to build things unto you. It's in the sanctuary. It's in, it's in the fellowship of the, of, the, of the believers of Jesus Christ. God has ordained corporate worship. He's ordained the church. He's ordained, ordained that to be your place of worship. Let me tell you, uh, the Jews had to go to Jerusalem. And I don't care where they were on the feast day, they had to travel to Jerusalem. That was the place of worship. We can't, we can't, we can't arbitrarily dis uh, decide what we want, how we want to worship God. He has prescribed it for us in His Word. Do not, do not. Yes, it's in there. 
conquer is the secret place. Look at this. Even in the world, people know how to find the right spot. Yeah. Now, now I'm going to take you back for a little bit. I don't want you to stay there. Just for a little bit, I don't want you to stay there. Don't you stay there. Now, when I was out, when I was out in the road getting high and all that stuff, I knew the right spot was in the right drug. Now you don't want me to cheat say that. Come on. I knew the see, I knew the right spot. And I was right. spending money for some weed. Come see me. I was the best. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Come on. I went to the right spot because I knew I would get the best stuff. I would get the most buck bang for my buck. Hey, you understand? Get Even that, the world get knows the right spot to go to. <laughs> Even though they're doing wrong. Come on. The world knows where the right party is. You can't think I'm going to go to somebody, but you understood and you found out where the right party was. Huh? Whatever your fancy was, you made sure you got there. You see, the world, the world understands being at the right spot. And the leaders that are wishy-washy and vacillating and don't know where the right spot is. Well, I went to church today. Well, you know, I, 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 went to, I had to go to somewhere this morning. I think, where did I go? Somewhere. Look into the bed. What are you looking at? And I went by, I went by this church, this Catholic church. And it was like, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning. You know what? And, you know, they, they went to church. And they walked in, had a couple of Hail Marys and some, you know, rosary stuff, and went out, and they're finished for the day. You see, that was not the right spot for them. You can't get the presence of God like that. It's not through a bunch of rituals and going through all this, all this ecclesiastical stuff with no power, no anointing. Somebody bring you, bring you some water and, you know, say some Hail Marys and some prayers that are dead and not alive. But you need to be in the right spot if you want deliverance. I guarantee there is no deliverance there. <laughs> so you think, oh, well, I can just go to any church. You can. You can. And you'll get what you pay for. <laughs> we as believers need to know where to find the move of God. We need, to, we need to know, be able to find out where the Holy Spirit is moving. As we sat over it, Lord, make me more aware of your Holy Spirit. Make me more aware of his moving. Make me more aware of how he operates, how he, how he works. Make me more aware. It's because it's in the consciousness of how he operates that will determine what we get from him. And so, you got to be in the right place at the right time. And so, some of you will come in with a benediction. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit has already moved in God. And now you want to invite him back. He said, I was there. Where were you? I was waiting for you. Where were you? If you, if you, if you have, if you want to encounter with God, you need to understand that the epicenter of every encounter is the secret place of God. The secret place is a place of secrets. You know what I'm talking about? about pillow talk. But I don't tell you what's going on with my pillow talk. Because none of your business. It's the secrets that I reveal unto the, unto the one who, who has my heart. And she can reveal to me what the secrets is all in her heart. And so the secret place is a place for secret to reveal. What are those secrets? The secrets are the lying and the purpose of God. Your destiny. Come on, somebody. God reveals those through intimacy. Through intimacy. Psalm 25, verse 14. Come on. If you fear him, 
and go stay in the secret place. And so you need to hang out there until you get what you need. Somebody will ask, well, how long is I stay there? You stay there until you get what you need. You stay there until you get what you came for. You go in with expectancy, but you come out with fulfillment. Enter in with expectation. Leave with fulfillment. The secret place are places of dreams. It's the place of visions. It's the place of revelations. It's the place of breakthroughs. It's the place of healings. It's the places of crucifixion. The secret place is a place of dreams. That's where Jacob met God, and God gave him a dream. Come on. The secret place is a place of, of visions. And if you, want, if you want God to speak to you, you want God to manifest supernatural things to you, I challenge you to go into the secret place. It's the place where God reveals his plan and his nature himself unto us. It's where the eyes of understanding are enlightened and open. The secret place is a place of breakthrough. How many of us need breakthroughs in our lives? It's amazing that what happens is when we go through, we run away from the secret place. When we go through, we run away from the place where God will meet us. We can have a God encounter where the supernatural and the supernatural collide and things can happen in, in the atmosphere. It's a place where there's a synergy between heaven and earth. There's a meeting that will take place. And yet we find ourselves running from the secret place. It's a place of healings. Jesus went to the sister and he stirred her for the trouble of water. The healing was in the water. It wasn't outside the waters. It was in the when they stepped in the pool. They were healed. And so, so many of us on the periphery, we won't step in. And being on the periphery will not bring you deliverance and healing. You have to step in. That's the place. You have to understand the significance of the place. You have to understand the power of the place. He tells, he tells Daniel, go down and watch. In the Jordan. Come on, there's a place that God has designed for us. The secret place is a place of crucifixion. Come on. It's a place where death occurs. But through death comes life. And so Calvary was a place, it was a place where a Calvary was made with God, that death would take place, that life would come out. Secret places are the place where breakthroughs will take place. And what God said to me, he said, look, I need a break. You need a breakthrough of your own will. Your own will is stopping you from walking through the things I have for you. And so that secret place is a place called Gethsemane. Gethsemane is a place, a place of press, a place of where, where you're being pressed. But that pressing is designed to break your will. It was at that place where Jesus' will was broken. It was at that place where he said, nevertheless, not my will, but that will be done. And I want you to know that in order for your will to be broken, you've got to go to a place where you'll be crushed. In order for your will to be broken, you got to go to a place where he's going he's gonna to demolish your will. Because your will is so strong, it is not crushed, it is not demolished. It'll just be put on hold today, but it'll come back up tomorrow. But I'm telling you to live secret place and you'll say God I need you to crush my will I need to destroy my will it prevented me from walking my purpose my destiny it prevented me from getting all that you have for me my will is my own worst enemy my will keep me from seeking you my will keep me from pursuing you my will all I want is what I want so the place of breakthrough is a place of this enemy the chains of our wills can be broken. The psalmist declared, he that dwells in the secret place, he that lives there, he that abides there, he that makes it your practice, your lifestyle, your commitment. I was telling somebody this the other day that God challenged, God challenged me. God challenged me because I went into a place, went into a place 
where it's just all about him. And we'll see the anointing that they do for. We're living a season where the supernatural is about to explode. Yeah. But no one's going to walk in the supernatural. It's going to cost you a price. It's going to cost you a price. And I said, God, I said, God, I want to pay the price for the supernatural anointing. I want to see the people here who live in the same I don't want folks to come to church and have church as usual and they come in one way to the same way. I want to see change broken. I want to see the stronghold demolished. I want to see the sick healed. I want to see you know, those who are bound delivered. I want to see the dead raised. I want to see uh, sight being recovered. I want to see people who are deaf and be able to hear. I believe that God in this season is going to release the, release the supernatural because that's what it's going to take to get people to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ when they see the power of God in action where the church is no longer this impotent gathering of people but it's going to be a powerful a powerful group of people that will carry anointing and, and carry and carry anointing and unction and that's why the challenge is that we got to get to a place of prayer that needs to be the place that we understand that understand that the significance
you fit in the right place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love that place of worship. Oh, how I love that place of worship. So if you stand with me, the Lord will just say to you, too.